I've been meaning to make this video for a really long time, so I'm really excited to talk about this river rock walkway, how I did it, and how you can make one too. My name is Amy, and over at Pretty Purple Door, I help home gardeners create landscapes that are uniquely you. And this river rock walkway is one of the very unique features of my own backyard. I stumbled upon some really cool images, I think on Pinterest, and I Googled the heck out of this, trying to figure out how to actually implement what I was seeing, and I couldn't find anything on the internet. It was like total crickets. So I really just was winging it. And after living with it for about a year and a half, I have definitely noticed some things that I would do differently. There are some things that I've changed along the way already. So make sure you stay tuned till the end of this video because I'm gonna go over a lot of that stuff. I'll tell you how I did it and then what I would actually do differently if I were to do it again. So what is the difference between doing a river rock walkway like this and any other kind of stone paver walkway? What are the pros and what are the cons? So some pros of doing the river rock versus a traditional style walkway are Number one, that it doesn't really need to be level. <laughs> so this is a big thing, especially if you have a yard that's going up and down, up and down. The river rock isn't going to need to be completely level in all places. It can kind of undulate with the lay of the land. So that's pretty cool. Another pro is that you don't really have to dig as much. You can kind of build it up over the ground instead of having to dig down into the ground. That depends on how you want it to look in the end, but that is definitely a pro if you don't feel like digging out a huge area. Another big pro to this type of walkway is that you can do small sections at a time. So I would work on it. I would do maybe a three to four foot area in one evening, and then I would put everything away and then I'd come back to it. So that was really helpful. Any kind of DIYer can always appreciate a project that you can do little by little over time. And another pro to doing this type of walkway is that it's really easy to expand over time. So just like you can work on it in sections, you can also expand it a year down the road. You wanna kind of build more out. You can definitely do that with this. And the biggest pro I think is the look of it. It's a really unique feature in my landscape. I love it. Everyone that comes over here walks down that walkway and they all just love it. So if you're looking to create a unique landscape, this river rock walkway might be for you. But before we get into it, let's go over some of the cons of it because there are definite cons. The first con is that it's definitely not as stable as a traditional flagstone path or brick walkway would be. It's kind of bumpy and lumpy and it's not for anyone that has issues walking or dealing with that. Another con is that it's a lot more labor intensive and time intensive than these other types of walkways. Even though you're skipping the digging and you don't have to level, it's still like smaller pieces and you sort of have to put it together like a puzzle. So I found it to be a lot more labor intensive than if I were to just lay a brick walkway. Another con to this project is that there's bigger cracks in between your stones than you would have in a traditional walkway for the most part. And with bigger cracks, that means there's bigger areas of sand or dirt. And that means more potential for weed growth. And I've definitely experienced this where I have to weed in between these cracks. I have one of those weed torches, the fire torches. I'll leave a link to that in the description below, but that's been really helpful in keeping the weeds back on this particular walkway. And I think the final con that I wanna talk about is just that it's hard to remove the sand and the concrete. It's hard to remove that from the surface of the stone because the stone is porous. If you don't do it fast enough, if you're not diligent about that and you wait and it dries, it becomes a really big headache. So keep that in mind too. Okay, so in order to build this walkway, I only needed a couple things. The first was the river rock or river stone. I sourced a lot of this locally from my parents' house and from my backyard. And I got a lot of the stones without having to pay for them, but you also can buy them at any landscape or garden center. Any nursery that will sell any kind of other stone will usually have these rocks and stones. I would really recommend getting stones that have a flat top but are more substantial in size. And I'll talk more about why I recommend that later. The other materials you'll need is something to clear the land and clear the grass below. I also used concrete mix, quickcrete and I used paver sand, and that was in a two to one ratio, so I needed twice as much sand as I did concrete. And then I used edging along the sides, the long pieces of edging that you would use to hold in any kind of patio paver. I used that at the end to secure everything in place. 
And in the end, I did use polymeric sand to seal in between the stones, but I'm not sure I would recommend doing that either. So we'll get to that a little later as well. So the first step to creating this is to clear the area that you're going to be putting your walkway in. And you would either need to remove the grass or put down some sort of heavy fabric to stop the grass from growing underneath. On the one side, I had a circular brick patio that it had to connect to. So when it was connecting to that, I actually had to dig down several inches in order to get to a lower level so I could build it back up and make the stones level. But in other areas of my landscape, I just sort of built up on top of where the ground was laying. And then at the end, I took some soil and graded down from that walkway to make it look like it was always there. So once you clear out that area, you're gonna wanna lay out exactly how you want the walkway to go. I used just a piece of red rope to do this and just get like a lay of where I wanted to go, how wide I wanted it. Mine's fairly narrow. It's about two and a half feet, but I did that purposely because I wanted it to be very private and secret. So you have to walk kind of one at a time to go through there. If you're looking for a standard size walkway where two people could comfortably go together, it would be closer to five feet. Okay. So somewhere between two and a half and five feet is kind of what you're looking at there. And yeah, once you have everything laid out and you have all your stones ready, you really just have to start mixing this concrete mix with the sand and then using that to lay your stones out. At first I did try to piece all of the stones together beforehand. I did try to lay them out and then put the mix down and then move them, but it never really worked out quite right. So I probably wouldn't recommend doing that. Like just take your stones and put down a little bit of this mix and then some water and you want it to be like a fairly heavy consistency not even muddy like peanut buttery i guess is the consistency that i was going for so that if i slapped it down on the ground i could squish a stone into it but it wasn't dripping away like it could hold that stone it held its form so that's sort of the consistency that you're looking for and i'd probably also recommend being very consistent with your mixing because i got a little lazy during that process i wasn't measuring and I feel like the stability actually suffered a bit because I wasn't mixing consistently. And make sure that you have at least three to four inches of this base plopped down so that you have area to swish the stones into and every stone is definitely inside of this concrete. And that's another problem that I had where towards the end I made the base a lot thinner and that part didn't hold up well at all. So I would I would really recommend making sure you're having like at least a three to four inch layer to squish the stones into. And as you're squishing, I'd really just be careful about getting any of that concrete mix on the tops of the stones. And if you do try to spray it off as quickly as possible, because a lot of that does kind of stay on the stones and it looks gross. And if it dries, it's like impossible to get off. So. As I was saying before about the polymeric sand, I think if I had to do it again, I wouldn't even have gone through that step because what happened was after I poured the polymeric sand into the holes and then tried to spray it off, a lot of it was getting stuck. So if you can do a thicker layer of that concrete sand mixture and skip the polymeric sand step and just use that base as the filler in between your stones as well. So yeah, I would just slap some down and then lay out my stones make sure it was fairly level. I did a little bit at a time. It really came out great. Okay, so my takeaways from this project, if I were to start completely over again and I didn't do it yet, this is what I would definitely do differently. I would use thicker stones that were deeper than what I was using. I was using these really flat, thin stones. I'd use the thicker stones and I'd make a much thicker base to accommodate those thicker stones just so I could really squish them in there and they would be more secure. The edging is something that I added the next season. I really wish I had done that right away because <laughs> it was kind of getting crumbly along the edges and, and starting to spill over. So I have a couple parts to repair. I would create a very consistent mix of the sand and the concrete together so that it was consistent the whole time, not just throwing handfuls of sand and winging it there. I would definitely be more consistent about that and make sure it's a nice thick layer. I would 
definitely take the stones and squish them in. I keep saying that, squish those stones in. Get them in and get them level. And hopefully if you do this correctly and you take your time, you can avoid having to use the polymeric sand altogether. And that would be the ideal situation in my opinion. I didn't use weed barrier and I don't regret not using weed barrier. The weeds that I'm finding that are coming in are coming from above anyway. They're not coming from below. So if you don't want to spend the money or you don't have the weed barrier, I don't think that's a big deal. I wouldn't change what I did there. And my last piece of advice here, I would just take my time. I have a tendency to really get excited about a project and I'm good at first and then eventually I'm just like I just want to get this thing done so I end up speeding up cutting corners a little bit and this project it's definitely one of those projects that it shows where I cut corners and I'm gonna have to redo those areas and I plan on redoing them. It was a really fun project it's really unique but I've never made this video because I did make a bunch of mistakes and I felt like oh, I can't really talk about this because I made mistakes but you know what Maybe you can learn from those mistakes that I've made so that you can do this project with a lot less headaches. And if you do come up with better tips along the way, uh, I'd love to hear those too. If you liked this video and you liked this unique project, you may want to check out this other video here, which is another really cool project that you can do that will make your landscape uniquely you. And I'll see you over in the next video.